Hi, my name is Shahir Ashoramian. I am the director of the Sensing and Communication Devices Research Group at Bell Laboratories Nokia. And I'm here to talk to you about the work that we've been doing for D-band communication, in particular for backhaul point-to-point radios operating up to 170 gigahertz. We presented some of this work at the RFIC 2020 symposium. This is the result of the work of some passionate and dedicated engineers in our group, and I suggest that you download the full paper to get all the fun details. And it's undeniable that our demand for data continues to grow. In fact, in the past few years, because of the development for 5G communication, some incredibly integrated and sophisticated phase array devices operating in millimeter wave frequency have become available. Of course, this is only part of the network. If you want to make the vision of 5G a reality, we must upgrade almost every aspect of our network. That includes our fiber optics, our backhaul, even our copper communication devices. Now, backhaul is a tricky business. In fact, it's really competitive because both in terms of cost and performance, we have some pretty stringent requirements. Below 44 gigahertz, Nokia Bell Labs has already shown the Wavens product series, which accomplished 4096 QAM and spectral efficiencies as high as 24 bits per hertz. But of course, as you go to higher and higher frequencies, things become more and more difficult. What we really want to do is we want to hit 100 gigabit per second over the air. And this can be accomplished with various different techniques. We can go to higher frequencies, which is what D-band is all about, as well as doing some other techniques in the digital domain like MIMO. So if you want to make a D-band point-to-point link to happen, we have to analyze what it takes. And if you look, even at 250 meters, the free space path loss is 124 dB. This is a huge number. It means that every component of the system, the packaging, the RFIC, the interconnect, all have to be world class in order to make this link even possible. And we, of course, at the same time have to reduce the cost to make it industry compatible. So how do we do this? Well, the very first step is, of course, to make some RFICs. And we've gone ahead and we created two chipsets that operate between 115 all the way to 170 gigahertz. And we've divided this frequency into two in order to maintain performance across the full band. Now, these RFICs are just as integrated as the RFICs we've demonstrated below 44 gigahertz. And this is really important because this integration not only brings performance, but also reduces the cost of deployment. These ICs use a highly integrated IQ direct conversion architecture, and they have a lot of functionalities built into the IC that includes analog baseband, frequency multipliers, digital interface for calibration, as well as a loopback architecture, which allows you to self-test these ICs without invoking any external D-band circuits. They're manufactured using a silicon germanium process from IHP, which is arguably one of the best silicon germanium process currently available in the world. We've, of course, tested these on the probe station. They operate from 1.2 volts to 2.5 volts, which is, by the way, very difficult to do, to build D-band circuits operating from 2.5 volts. And they consume about 1 to 2 watts, uh, for depending on the mode of operation. Now, we get some world-class performance from these. Output power beyond 12 dBm, noise figure between 8 to 9 dB, and linearity, which is compatible with very complex modulation, as we will see. There's also a really good matching between measurement and simulation. This is in two parts. One, because the models from the foundry are quite good. And at the same time, our researchers have done an excellent job modeling every piece of the system. As a result, we can do some really complex modulation never seen before at these frequencies. With output powers beyond 0 dBm, we can go all the way up to 512 QAM constellation, which is quite impressive at D-band frequencies. At the same time, we can hit data rates beyond 40 gigabit per second. Now, this, of course, is only part of the problem. Even with a really good RFIC, you still need to get the signal from the RFIC into the antenna. And that interface cannot be very lossy, otherwise it will undo all the performance of the RFICs. And for that, we have moved on to glass. Glass is a really interesting material because it gives you very good lithography. And some, with some clever design, you can get some really good loss from these. So these devices here have an interface loss from the RFIC to a waveguide port of an antenna less than a dB, up to about 150, 160 gigahertz. These are extraordinary numbers, which means that we don't lose a lot of performance by packaging these, which has always been a problem at D-band frequencies. This is, at the same time, an interposer, an interface to the antenna, a BGA package, and of course, connects all the signals to the chips. We call this radio on glass, and we believe that this is the next generation of ultra-high performance devices operating at these frequencies. We've created wireless links with these. 
by putting them on a regular PCB with a waveguard interface at the back. We have emulated a link of about 250 meters by putting attenuators in between, and we can do 256 QAM or even higher modulation up to the error rates that support ultimately 100 gigabit per second wireless link using MIMO. We have in fact built phased arrays on glass using some of our own phase shifter elements, LNAs and PAs. These are single chip uh, phase array elements. There are eight of them on this module. And we have measured EARP of 44 dBm at 140 gigahertz, which again is a world record, especially because of the level of integration and the phased array on glass architecture. And this is indeed a very interesting domain to explore with a lot of innovation still to come. We could potentially build a backhaul radio completely on glass and be able to have this extraordinary performance going even above 170 gigahertz in the future. And I want to thank you for your attention and for seeing the work that we've done at Bell Labs. We look forward to continuing this research and hope to see you in person.